Hi, my name is Amelia and I'm an art teacher with Artists for Kids in the North Vancouver School District. Welcome to the Gordon Smith Gallery in North Vancouver. This year our AFK Art Reach series brings you artwork and art activities and it is primarily inspired by the theme of play and the artwork that you see in the gallery around me. And these videos will be posted on our website every other week and they will feature activities that you can do in your classroom, at home, and often outdoors. Today I'm going to share with you the artwork of two Canadian artists, Anna Binta Diallo and David Blackwood. And inspired by their artwork, we're going to create stencils and then use those to create stick puppets. And these can be used for telling stories. So as we carry out our activities today, we can consider the following question. How can we tell stories by collecting and playing with images? And so the activities today can be connected to the curricular competencies in the language arts and activities that involve storytelling and play, as well as oral storytelling processes. And as we carry out our activities today, we can also consider the first people's principles of learning and the idea that learning is embedded in memory, history, and story. First, we'll look at the artwork of Anna Binta Diallo. Anna Binta is a Montreal-based artist, and in her artwork, she explores nostalgia, memory, and identity. And she also explores storytelling and folk tales. And she uses collected archival material and works in collage, painting, drawing, design, and video. And we're really excited this fall to be working with Anna Binta as an AFK artist in residence. And we will be working with her to launch a series of three videos in October and November in which Anna Binta presents her own creative process and also presents ideas for art making. And all of these videos will be available on the AFK website. And I'm now going to share with you some images of Anna Binta's artwork. These are all a part of an exhibition that is currently at Access Gallery in Vancouver. And this exhibition is up until November 14th, so you can go see it before then. So take a close look at these images. What shapes, creatures, and characters do you see? Look closely. What images and other materials has the artist used to fill these shapes and characters? And what colors stand out to you? What patterns? What textures? And what are the characters doing? What story or stories might the artist be telling? And now what would it be like to be in the gallery space with these artworks and to move around them? Would your perspective change as you moved around the room? And would the stories change as your perspective changed? We'll now look at the artwork of David Blackwood. He is a Canadian artist originally from Newfoundland, and he's one of Canada's leading printmakers. And in his artwork, he has primarily focused on representing the history and the landscape of Newfoundland. And he's known as a visual storyteller. So he often draws upon dreams, legends, myths, and stories. Take a look at this artwork. It's a type of print called an etching, and the title of the artwork is Wreck of the Nickerson. What is going on here, and what do you see in this image? Do you see a shape in the water behind the whales? What is it? And what is the other shape on the surface of the water, further in the distance? Would you want to be in this boat? Why, or why not? And what time of day is it? Do the humans know that the whales are under the surface of the water? And what are these whales doing? Could there be two stories taking place at the same time within this image? And if so, what might these stories be? You will need some simple materials to do our art project today. Firstly, each person will need four small sheets of paper I've taken a legal sheet of paper and cut it in four, so each of my small sheets are 7 inches by 4.25 inches. 
You will also need a pencil, a marker. I will be using a Sharpie. You will need two pieces of construction paper or cardstock that are each eight and a half by 11 inches in size. You'll need some scissors, a glue stick, and each person will need two wooden skewers, or you could even just use two pencils. And you'll need some recycled paper and recycled uh, images. So that could be magazines or newspaper or paper from the recycling bin. You'll need a glue stick. And uh, if you have some plasticine, that would be great as well, as well as some tape. So today we'll begin by creating stencils and these will be used to later create our puppets. And to create our stencils, we're going to be inspired by images of whales. So you're going to, to begin with, need your four small sheets of paper and a pencil. And in a moment, I will show you four artworks that all feature whales. And these artworks are all included in the play exhibition at the Gordon Smith Gallery. So as you look at each image, you will take one piece of paper and choose a whale in that image to draw on your piece of paper. And remembering that the whale that you draw should take up most of the piece of paper. Here you can see some examples of whales that I drew. Another thing to keep in mind as you are drawing your whales while looking at the artworks in a moment is that you do not need to include any little details inside the shape of the whale. We will be cutting these whale shapes out later and just be using the outline. So you're just creating an outline drawing of your whales today. No small details inside of your drawings. finished making your four whale drawings you will then choose your two favorite and you will need some scissors and you will cut out your whale drawing just around the outside edge so here you can see I've cut out one of my whale drawings and now I will cut out the other one so after you cut out your two whale drawings, you will lay them down on your eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper. And here you can see I've left some space between my two whales. They're not too close together. And now I am going to outline them, just holding them in place with one hand and outlining them with a pencil with the other hand. So here you can see I have finished outlining my two whales. Now I will take my scissors and I am going to cut these shapes out, but I'm going to cut out the space inside my whales. And so a trick I like to use to start cutting on the inside of a shape is to take my paper and fold it a little bit, but not. I'm, you can see I'm not completely pressing that fold down. I'm just sort of curving or bending my paper and I create a snip in the middle like that. And then I can start cutting on the inside. And so I will cut out the shapes of these whales, but just on the inside. And this is how I will create my stencils. So here you can see I have cut out both of my whale shapes. And so now I have my stencil and I'm ready for the next step in my artwork. 
As a warm up for our activity today, you could head outside and bring your stencil with you and you could use it to create images on the ground. So you can see here, I use some wood chips to create the shape of a whale on the ground. You could also experiment with using sand or gravel to do this. And if you happen to have any chalk, you could also bring that outside and trace your stencil as I have done here. And I'm lucky today because it's quite dry and I would just recommend not getting your stencil too wet as you play with it outdoors because we will need it for the next step in our project. So for the next step in our art project, we are going to make a little collection of images that we get from recycled sources, such as magazines, newspapers, or even papers from the recycling bin. And so think about the colors and the textures, the images, and maybe even words that you choose. Here you can see my little collection of papers that I put together. And you will be using these papers to create a collage on your other eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper. And these colors and textures and images are going to be used to fill the shape of your whales. So as you can see here, I've experimented with laying my whales down on top of the images that I chose. And I'm starting to think about building characters. These two whales are going to be my characters. And so I can think about what kind of colors, textures, images do I want to build these characters with? Do I want a lot of reds or blues? Or do I want to fill these characters with pictures of the sky or the water or a city? And what could that mean for these different characters? So once you have a little collection of images, you will then glue them down onto your eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper. So here you can see that I have cut out some of my different textures and images and I have laid them out on my piece of paper, but I haven't actually glued them down yet. This just gives me a chance to play with them, to move them around. Again, I could take my whale stencil and lay them over top of these this collection of images and textures that I've made just to see uh, what they might look like. And as I'm doing this, we can think back to Anna Binta Diallo's artwork again, and how she fills her characters with different textures and images and words. And she talks about filling her characters with stories. So think about these images that you select and how could an image that you choose tell a story? How could it represent a story? And then how could you fill your character with these different stories? So once you have a collection of textures and images that you're happy with, you can then glue them down onto your piece of paper using a glue stick. So now you can see I have glued down all of my pieces of paper and I did a lot of overlapping in order to fit them all on to my eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper. And you can see I filled in all my white spaces on the inside of my paper. I didn't worry too much about the edges and some of my pictures come right off the edge of my sheet of paper. So I could actually just trim those edges down quickly. I don't need those extra pieces. And the next thing I get to do is choose how to trace my whale stencils onto this collage I've created. So this is a chance to really play around with placement and choose a area that I really want to highlight. And so I'm going to stop there because I really like how uh, placing it here highlights the tree and some of this orange and a little bit of the sky. Mm -hmm. Once I find a spot that I like, then I will hold my stencil down with one hand, take my marker, I'm using a Sharpie, and trace just along the inside edge of your stencil like I'm doing here. And then you will take your other stencil that you created and find another selection. And once you're happy with that, again, you will trace your stencil. 
So here you can see I have traced two whales onto my collage. And the next step for my project is to cut these two whales out. Here you can see I have finished cutting out both of my whale shapes. And for the next step in our project, you will need your two wooden skewers or two pencils if you don't have skewers, and you'll need some tape. And so to turn these whales into puppets, all you're going to do is tape your skewer or your pencil onto the back and you get to choose how you want to position your whale. Is it kind of going forward? Is it kind of leaping or swimming upwards or downwards? This is up to you. I think I'm going to have mine kind of coming downwards like that. So you will position your skewer on the back and use a piece of tape Oops. and use a piece of tape. You may want to pull off a few before you get started. So you're ready to tape. Um, to, you will hold your skewer or pencil in place. And you might want to use a stronger type of tape as well so that your skewer or pencil does not fall off. So there's one puppet and I will choose the position for my other puppet. Perhaps this one will be going upwards. And so once you have completed your puppets, you could think about displaying them as a class. And if you have access to plasticine, one way that you could display them is by rolling out a long uh, strip of plasticine, long snake of plasticine, and placing it on the table, maybe pressing it down. And then as a class, you could take turns uh, positioning your puppets in the plasticine. And you might need to sort of pinch the plasticine around the base so that your puppet doesn't move. Once you complete your artwork, think about the stories that you could tell using your puppets. Perhaps you could work in a pair or in a small group to invent a story using the characters that you created. You could write this story down or you could perform it for the rest of your class. And also think about how you might display your class's puppets for others to see. Maybe you could create an arrangement of them facing out of a window so that people walking past the school can see these characters that you have created. We would absolutely love to see the artwork that you have created and you could share it with us by posting photos on Instagram and using the hashtag AFK Artreach. You could also take pictures and send them to us by email. Thank you so much for joining me today and be sure to check back in the coming weeks for more AFK Artreach videos.